Okay, let's have an interesting breakdown on this movie, Eternals. I'll be talking about some of the lenses, cameras, and some 3D and VFX compositing softwares used in some of the scenes I'll be breaking down. This is going to be fun. Without wasting much time, Eternals was directed by an Oscar award-winning director, Clu Zhao. If you've taken time to watch the whole movie, you realize the approach to this movie is totally different from the immersive CGI Marvel movies we are always used to. It's because the director is very practical with most of her movies, less CGI, shoots a lot on location, and has an indie style approach to her movies. In fact, most people weren't expecting her to deliver this good because her style just wasn't a fit for Marvel movies, but she nailed it. She brought something different to the table this time, which took away most of the artificial feel we get when watching Marvel movies. If you want to learn more about practical VFX, then I would encourage you to learn more from Christopher Nolan and cinematographer Roger Deakins. You can follow Closer carefully as well if you love her star. We have Scanline as the lead VFX on this movie. Over 400 VFX shots across 12 sequences. That's awesome compared to Avengers, Spider-Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, Deadpool, mm, yeah, Marvel just loves CGI more than reality. But here is Closer bringing those numbers down to less than 400, which means actors would get to travel and have different experiences other than standing in front of green and blue screens throughout the whole movie. Now back to Eternals, let's begin to break the scenes down. Let's take a close look at this first scene. The location of this scene was in London. We get a wide angle look from the start to enable the viewers have a complete overview of how the environment looks like. This particular movie is filled with lots of wider angle shots. I guess it's one of the director's signature. Cameras used were Ari Alexa Mini LF and Ari Alexa Mini both IMAX certified. One thing to note about the Alexa Mini and LF cameras which gravitate most directors towards it is because of its low light capability. It's quite expensive though but if you are to direct any high budget movie with lots of dark scenes then you wouldn't have any reason not to try this camera. Alexa Mini and LF are also certified on lots of online streaming platforms so you would be in good spot working with this camera. Lenses used in this film were signature prime lenses. There is a lot happening in this scene. This is the battle sequence through Camdeen between Deviant, Crow, and Eternal, Cersei, and Sprite. As Crow appears from the canal, Cersei deploys her celestial energy, trapping Crow in quicksand and giving them time to escape. Let's move a little forward and begin with the camera movement. This scene was shot both on location and on set. How they achieved these passes were the use of motion control cameras. So what they did was to film with the motion control on location and replicate the same machine calculated movement on set where the actresses were placed on a blue screen stage. Now if you have no idea what a motion control is, um, I wouldn't want to get into it but let me brief you. A motion control is a device that allows for complete control and precise repetition of camera movements. This camera has played a major role in most of the creative shots you see in a lot of movies. You can check out my video on some of the best camera gears for both pros and beginners. Dope video. Kindly check it out. Link in the description below. Okay, let's continue. The actresses were placed on a blue screen stage in different positions for every shot. With the use of the motion control, they are able to match what they shot on location with what they had on the blue stage very well calculated without any errors. Yes, errors do happen, but not when you are working on a big budget. It's minimal. As the scene proceeds, we see Sprite try to confuse the Deviants with their powers by replicating herself and Cersei. So now, we see the motion control camera movements here with the inclusion of animated doubles of Cersei and Sprite, which is being duplicated into the scene to make the viewers have a few of multiple characters and actresses. The CG doubles you see in this particular scene were sculpted with ZBrush, same with other elements sculpted in other scenes in this movies. ZBrush was heavily used on this movie. 
most of the time we see most vfx houses working with most in-house softwares but this movie was mostly polished in zbrush and maya nothing too extreme going on here and one interesting thing that caught my attention was scanline's role in this movie scanline is a vfx house that mostly works on hollywood blockbuster dance simulations i bet most of the movies you've watched had most of the scenes with simulations in it made by scanline that's their stronghold but we see scanline trying to break the gap here by modeling texturing lighting and so on i went back and replayed most of the scenes made by scanline to see if i could pinpoint out some obvious errors but I think um, they did good. The deviants looked rigid and not flexible though. Hey, sometimes these big VFX houses mess up big time. So it's okay to search for these errors when watching a movie, especially when you are also into 3D. It opens your visual memory into knowing what's real and what's fake when watching a visual presentation. Let's move on to scene two. So we start with multiple wide angle shots with the bus coming in and BAM turns into rose petals. I think this particular scene had over 40 shots. I actually lost count at a point but I would like to talk about the three most important shots that amaze me. We have the first shot on a wide angle lens which has the bus coming in. In reality there was no bus. This is a digitally scanned bus integrated into this shot. The second shot is actually a real bus but this time in front of a green screen. The only real thing here is the bus. Everything else is CGI. What I pay attention to most in shots like this are distance and speed. Most VFX artists try to deceive people in difficult times like this but I think this was um, taken into account. Now we see the digitally scanned bars turn into rose petals. The petals were both practically added and also CGI supported. So what you see on the ground are actually petals, but what you see raining from the skies, which we would consider as the remains of the bars are CGI. Quick one here. Zhao approached the movie like an indie movie. Now I ask myself why indie movies don't take this approach rather than something like this edge the edge mat feather on the side i find the fixes in most indie movies not adding up most people thought this movie would be a complete fail because of how indie approaching zawa's film were but she surprised us all kindly sit tight subscribe like for the next movie breakdown